Our topic of the week, heart rate. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, This week's topic is heart rate. Uh, So we do these topics uh, to to help uh, the Ironman first timers or maybe folks who are just now getting into the triathlon world. Uh, But we're also doing this to help bring awareness uh, and to raise funds for Syrian refugees in the Becca Valley of Lebanon. Um, Through Ironman Foundation, we support a US uh, US based nonprofit called Tying Vines. Uh, they do humanitarian work for uh, refugees in the Becca Valley uh, amongst other uh, border countries of Syria. They do great work. So if you want to learn more about what we're doing, what, what uh, the project and what we're fundraising for, be sure to watch my other videos. And if you'd like to donate, uh, you can go to my Ironman website and follow the instructions, click the donate button. Um, appreciate that. Okay, today we're going to talk about um, heart rate, okay? A buddy of mine uh, who's a cyclist uh, watched a couple of our videos and said, suggested that we explain, elaborate a little more about what heart rate is, why it's important, what aerobic base is, aerobic effort. Uh, and, and I, you know, after training now for a few years I've been training using heart rate, I kind of take it for granted, but uh, good point. And so we're going to go over that today. Heart rate for endurance training is is really the key to everything. Um, this is my personal opinion. Uh, this is my coach's opinion. Um, so it's one of the most heart rate is one of the most effective ways to monitor your effort. You need to be in an aerobic effort for endurance training, with the exception of intervals and, and other things to help your pace. But those are, are interspersed early, and, and then once you get into the heavy training, it's, it's aerobic, okay? So let's talk about what aerobic effort is and what it's not. Understand, I'm not a science guy, so, um, but over you know, the years of, of re- reading, training, experiencing it, um, I'm going to give you the, the lamest version. Aerobic effort uh, is, is when your body uses the oxygen you breathe, um, to burn glycogen and fat. Okay, this is lower lower effort training, and so it's very effective. You can do it a long, long time. Okay, um, anaerobic, meaning void of oxygen, is is when your body is burning glycogen. Okay, there's no no oxygen involved, and once your body is depleted of sugars, then you hit the wall or you've heard the term bonk, okay, you bonk. Uh, that's why you take nutrition gels during, the, during your, your longer uh, sessions because you're trying to, to, uh, to uh, make up what you're losing in, in your, and it, when you're doing uh, over time. And, you know, you're doing aerobic, but you're burning those calories. If you're doing a, a interval training or you're doing a high intensity, you burn those, those sugars. It's like putting on the afterburners. So... Uh, you, you, you use n- nutrition to kind of replace those, those lost stores of, of sugars. Threshold or lactate threshold is the point at which your body goes from aerobic effort to anaerobic or aerobic to state to anaerobic state. The threshold, lactate threshold, is really, really important for endurance training. You need to understand what that is. We'll talk about that, how you determine that later. But it's important that when you're doing endurance training, you're, you're below that threshold, okay? Because once you get to that threshold and you start, your body starts to go anaerobic, you're on the clock and you hit the wall, you're done, okay? So you want to stay anaerobic. That is when you hear me say my ceiling rate, uh, you establish a, a ceiling or um, a limit of your heart rate that is below your threshold. And in, and in the run, typically it's about 10 beats below your threshold, your, your lactate threshold. Uh, for the bike, because you're using, you're losing, you're using muscle group, you know, large muscle group, but you're using less of your entire body uh, on the bike. And so 
that that ceiling is normally 20 call it 20 beats below your threshold it keeps you fully anaerobic that's really really important in, in these long long sessions long run bike sessions um, so that's what those terms mean when you hear me say threshold ceiling that's what I'm talking about um, now let's talk about heart rate technology over the last you know 10 years has r dramatically improved and um, now you have all kinds of options to monitor your effort um, heart rate is monitored via a watch uh, there are you know the, there's an, there's a debate ongoing debate about uh, what is the best monitor of your effort um, the heart rate with a heart rate watch with a strap that has the sensor uh, near your heart that it, it takes the frequencies of your heart I don't know exactly sure how it works uh, it's supposed to be more accurate more reliable uh, a lot of these these watches now have a sensor if you can see that uh, has a sensor an optical sensor on the bottom of the watch that you wear on your wrist and it picks up it sends it emits a light and it picks up differences in color supposed to figure out a way it, it, and it does it does a good job by and large uh, of figuring out what your heart rate is via the light okay um, so I think it's established that the if you want a very reliable um, heart rate monitor you wear the chest strap these other these watches that have optical sensors um, it's what I wear today um, are, are I think reliable when you're on a bike and you're on a run as long as you wear it tightly enough it has to be affixed firmly to your skin um, if it loses that connection then, then it starts to become a little sketchy uh, but by and large it gives you a, a very good indicator of your heart rate which is a good indicator of your effort okay now so there are some drawbacks to this technology one is what is called cardiac drift uh, if you're doing a long run and you're, you're at your ceiling or you're five beats below and that's where you want to stay, you can tell by your effort that you're in that mode. When it's hot and humid outside, uh, your body will, your heart rate will drift upward because as you sweat and you sweat a lot, the viscosity of the blood plasma changes. And again, I'm no scientist but that change in viscosity of your blood plasma will actually uh, cause your heart to pump a little harder to get the same amount of, of blood through your system. And when it does that, of course, your heart beats faster. And even though your effort is the same, your heart appears, gives this appearance or perception of being higher and your and your watch or your monitor will reflect that and then you're thinking well, why is my heart rate higher I haven't changed anything you know my fitness is good in, in cooler weather you won't have that effect so much in longer runs you're gonna have it regardless of the weather but hot humid days when you sweat a lot uh, you're gonna have that cut so that's a drawback but it, it's the best tool I'm gonna say it's the best tool we have today okay um, other drawbacks uh, there's a, a lag in the reporting so if you do a hard effort if you do an interval there's could be 10 seconds you know um, of lag between what your heart rate monitor shows and what it actually your heart rate actually is and so if you're doing 30 second intervals 45 minute intervals whatever and you want to be right on the on the mat then you know just be aware that that you're gonna have some some lag time again it's a small price to pay it's a, it's it, this heart rate is a good indicator so um, so n not that big a deal uh, there are other tools out there um, power is one so the cyclists out there and a lot of triathletes um, depend on on power meters on their bikes uh, as the best indicator of effort and I don't disagree in terms of the science it, it does provide you that direct it's a, like a direct drive uh, reflection of your effort okay the problem with that of course is only on the bike not on the run and it also 
does not take into, in my opinion, doesn't take into account uh, external conditions. So when it's really hot and humid and your body is, is not, uh, uh, even though you, you have, you're, you're putting out an, uh, a power of however many watts and you stay on, you're supposed to stick to that, that wattage. Well, you're dying because you can't breathe because of the heat or whatever. And it doesn't, so the power is the power. Well, but your effort may be actually something higher than what your power indicates because of external conditions. So, so it has its drawbacks as well. Um, I don't use power meter. I'm, I'm probably a little uh, less impressed with it. Um, I haven't spent the money. It's very costly also. So, um, you know, these, these aren't cheap. These, these nice watches aren't cheap, but uh, for me, this is uh, this is the best tool, best effective, uh, cost-effective tool that you can have. So that's my opinion on on what's out there. So watches, uh, what's out there? You know, I started with this Polar. I still use this Polar actually in the pool because it's a very simple. Uh, I don't worry about heart rate in the pool. It's, it's ineffective in the pool in the water, anyways. Um, so I use this uh, still in the pool. It used to, it, I came with a chest uh, monitor and I used it in my first Ironman. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, of course, the Apple Watch has uh, GPS, it has heart rate, uh, you know, all those uh, me metrics. Or, and, uh, and I use this actually sometimes. I have Strava uh, app on this watch and so I use it from time to time. I recently, last year, bought this Garmin. Uh, it's a, a Forerunner 735 XT, I believe. Multi sport watch. Um, I have a love hate relationship with uh, this watch. Uh, it works mostly, but sometimes it will not want to connect uh, the GPS, uh, and which is really, really uh, frustrating when you're trying to get going on a run and it will not connect. Um, but once it does connect, it does, is very reliable on the heart rate. Um, a few settings I had to, to fiddle with to get the mileage to, to reflect uh, similar mile, mileage to, the, to this Apple Watch and to, uh, I used to have a TomTom, -tom. uh, somebody's borrowed it. Um, but uh, it seems to be working fine now. But uh, the GPS is a little sketchy sometimes, pretty frustrating. But overall, like my Garmin, um, there are other watches out there, um, several different brands. I, I don't know all of them. Suffice to say, there's, there's plenty to choose from, so you just do your research. So my met matrix uh, for uh, heart rate, I, I've mentioned to you, threshold and ceiling. My max heart rate is estimated around 200, 197 to 200. My threshold, remember that anaerobic, aerobic to anaerobic point is 171. And my ceiling, run ceiling is 161 and my bike ceiling is 151. So those are the numbers I use to train. Now, what is, is critically important, uh, if you're gonna use heart rate, as a means to train. You have to know what that threshold is. Now there are, there are ways to do that. You can Google it uh, by, by using a sprint and go to max effort to exhaustion and you know, that, that gets to be sketchy because some people's pain threshold is a little lower than others and then they think they're max and they're not. So I recommend getting uh, a lactate threshold test. You can go to any, if you have a local sports medicine clinic, uh, there are other places that do these. They'll put you on a treadmill and they will poke, prick your finger and take blood every three minutes, increase the pace of that treadmill over time. And, and what they're looking for is that, that jump from a unit that, that gives you gives the indication of, of going from aerobic to anaerobic and uh, and so it's very reliable uh, it gives you that starting point if you don't have that then you're really 
simply using your these all this technology as a reporting device but you don't know where you're at and so you don't know if you're training in the right zone or the, or the right spot so if you're going to use heart rate I, I, I highly recommend getting that lact, lactate threshold test to set your numbers and then you're good to go that number doesn't really change much I've had two tests um, one before Ironman, one after Ironman, months apart, a year apart, and they didn't change. It was just exactly the same number. So uh, once you get that, um, over time as you get older, it starts to creep down, but I wouldn't be too concerned about that. That's my two cents on, on heart rate. One last little tidbit. Uh, if, if you are training for Ironman, uh, if it's your first race and, and you're, you're trying to understand how best to train, and you're used to your group rides and, and you're riding 20 miles or you're running 10 Ks and that's great and everybody does. Um, but remember that Ironman is 140.6 miles. It's not 10 K. It is not your 20 mile, 30 mile group ride. Okay. Um, do not, um, go into training thinking you're going to hold that pace when you do your 15 mile run or your 50 mile bike or your 70 mile bike, um, you simply have, if you're going to run heart rate, you got to stick to your heart rate. Okay. Uh, those big efforts, um, will not do you any good. Okay. Uh, having a KOM on Strava, um, is cool, but trust me, does not help you when you hit mile 13 on the Ironman run. Okay. So, that's my, uh, that's my two cents on heart rate. Hope it helped. You can uh, follow us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And we also, if you want to subscribe to this channel, please do. Um, and if you have any friends who are in triathlon or, or training for Ironman, be sure and let them know um, so they can, uh, we can continue to grow our community and maybe they can get something um, beneficial out of this. So thanks again for watching. Uh, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up and uh, be sure and leave any comments below. Love to hear your thoughts. Uh, thanks again, and we will see you next time.